Good afternoon, folks, and welcome back to another episode of Cooking in Plaid, where all we need is an idea, a sharp knife, and a plaid shirt. As usual, recipes around here are optional. Now today, we happen to be working on glazed carrots. Simple, yet delicate, but so, so easy. Now generally what I would use this dish for would be to accompany something on a bigger scale of a meal. Usually when you're going with a more hearty dish, as we generally do here in good old Alberta, Canada, uh, it, it's going to end up clashing with the actual dish, whether we're having meatloaf or chicken or spare ribs, it doesn't really matter. But if I'm doing a really big meal, especially a holiday meal where I'm going to have a nice crisp salad on the side, then I do find that it complements it. Especially if you have kids at the table, right? I mean, these are glazed carrots with a bit of sugar in them, so they're going to be on the sweet side. Or if you happen to have somebody around who isn't a huge lover of vegetables, but they do like sweeter foods, then it would also really go well with that group of people as well. Now, spinning through these carrots, you can see what kind of peeler I'm using. I like to call it the slingshot style. Stick, two bars going up, blade in the middle. I like the way that the carrot's able to turn in my hand, and I'm just using one straight motion, back and forth, back and forth. Pretty careful to not catch my finger there. I've used a few different types of peelers, and I do find this to be the most effective. It's the quickest. Uh, back when I was a boy, I used to be able to run through a 50-pound bag of potatoes, peeled, cut, and on the stove within about 45 minutes, which at that experience level, that wasn't too bad. So, oh, that coffee, it does look delicious, doesn't it? So for this dish, generally, I like to go with cutting the carrot itself on a bias. So all I'm doing is taking off the end, and then I'm making angled cuts. It doesn't really matter if you slice them, if you cut them into a dice, if you, it really doesn't matter the shape. But I find on a personal level with the finished product, I really like the way that it looks. It has this really elegant look to it. It looks like it's not that simple, especially around people that aren't familiar with cooking. So it just adds to the dish. As I'm running through these cuts, I'll take a moment to mention, I am trying and taking an extra moment to make sure that these cuts are uniform. Especially in this kind of dish, we're gonna be both boiling them and sauteing them. So we wanna be careful to make sure that they're all the same size. If there's a little bit of variance, it's not the end of the world. Because what ends up happening is if you have a really big one, then it's going to be a little crunchy. And then if you have a really small one, or a really thin one, then it's going to be very mushy. And I'm just noticing now that I'm not wearing a plaid shirt. Well, that's certainly not good. But with that said, it is important to make sure whether or not dice, sliced, bias cut, it doesn't matter which you decide to do or whatever is easiest for you. Most people are going to do a quick slice because that's generally what's easiest. But just make sure that they're nice and uniform and clean looking. Now at this point, it's time to put some water on the pan because we're going to put it on to boil. I've looked at a few different recipes over the years and the majority of them say to cover the carrot until it's just covered with water. I find on a personal level that you end up with an overcooked carrot. For me, I think on this one I used about a cup, cup and a half water. But what I find that works best for this dish is to put in enough water so about halfway up the carrot is submerged and the top half of the dish is uncovered. And now it's time to add a little bit of sugar. So this one is really all about personal preference. For this dish, I use two large carrots, two small carrots, with one teaspoon of sugar. Now this is gonna give it a nice glaze, but it's also not gonna be terribly sweet. The sweetness will be there, but not so much so. 
on the same size dish, I've definitely used over a tablespoon and I found it so sweet. It's almost like we're cooking with candy <laughs> and we don't want to be cooking with candy. Um, so here I'm mixing together. Oh, and thank goodness I found myself a plaid shirt. We almost had a case of false advertising there. So I'm going to go ahead, mix this up and then she is at a boil. So at this point, I'm just going to pop back and forth and continue mixing these together. That way, we're making sure that the sugar or the glaze is going to be nice and uniform throughout the pot. So right now, we're just waiting for the water to boil off. Can't stress enough how important it is to never walk out of the kitchen when you have something like this going on. It's a great way to start a fire. So at this point, I'm turning the stove down to a good medium because it was boiling. It's going to be at a medium high, which is perfect because we're trying to work a saute, but I don't want anything to burn. So here I'm using about a tablespoon of butter. At this point, I could technically pull it off right now, but uh, when you use the butter, it's going to add a really nice sheen to the carrot. It's going to pop on the plate and make it look that much more delicious. So now it's up to the individual making the dish as to how far they want it to go. You could literally wait until the butter melts. You're still going to get that sheen and you could pull it and it's going to be nice. Me, personally, I like to wait until there's just a touch of brown on the carrot itself. That way you know that it's going to have a nice firmness to it. Like I'm just letting that sugar caramelize and it's still going to give it that pretty pop. Now with any kind of saute, you don't always have to be able to flip a pan. You can use a spoon or a spatula or you know, whatever works for you. What is important is that it's always flipping about every 20 seconds, you know, to get that uniform brownness on everything and make sure that nothing burns. It's a constant flip. You want it moving and moving and moving. So never forget to turn down the stove when you're done. And there's your beautiful carrot. Well, that's it for today, folks. Feel free to let me know how it turned out for you. If you have any ideas for me to try out something different or interesting, go ahead and comment. Until next time, keep on cooking.